Well, happy Saturday, friends. Mark Holmes here, <laughs> doing what I do, which is always working, trying to get ahead. And I hope you guys are having a great Saturday. Um, there we go. Had a little dust there. <laughs> kind of dusty here in the workshop. I hope you guys are having a great Saturday. And I um, hope you all are being safe out there. So, the Dallas Cowboys, as well as the rest of the NFL, coaches are now able to go back to the facilities. And we know that the NFL and the NFLPA are working on figuring out exactly how the player is going to be able to get back to work safely and have a season. Um, one, we don't know if there's going to be fans in the stands or not. But they'll get that worked out, I'm sure, one way or the other. There's no way we're going to do without football. No way. And so now the question is, is as we look at how this team is built right now, the big question is, do we look at this as a team that could go all the way? Or do we look at this as a team that we're trying to build for the future to have a window open? Because there's two different paths that you go. If you think that you're close, if you look at it and you say, hmm, I've got an opportunity because maybe the conference isn't, you know, in great shape. You know, some years you look at like, let's say the AFC and you look at it and say there's not really a lot of good teams in the AFC and that this might be a year that you have an opportunity, you know, or other years we look at it and say, man, the conference is going to be hell this year and it's going to be difficult to get past other teams. And what we need to do is build for the future and have a window down the road. Boy, I need to get some clippers and cut this hair. And so as we look at this, we have to make a determination or I don't have to make a determination. The Dallas Cowboys have to make a determination. Do you feel that if you have a couple of more pieces, a couple extra weapons, that the time is now to try and make that run and try and get a Super Bowl? Well, we know Jerry Jones is not getting any younger. And we know that he is desperate to want to hold up that Lombardi trophy again and say that, hey, I built another great team. Talent-wise... I think you have a lot of talent. I think we've always had a lot of talent. I think the biggest problem we've had is not knowing what to do with that talent or maximizing the talent. I think now that you look at it, you think you've got some coaches. You've got a good mix of young and old. The question is, is it enough on its own to do it? I don't know that it's enough to do it on its own. I think they still need a little bit more help. But, here's the caveat. You gotta understand, you only have X amount of time when you get a group of guys together to keep them together. You can look at, let's say, the Seattle Seahawks. You know, when Russell Wilson first got there, they had a young defense and things together. They had some offensive players. They had a group of people that were great. They ended up going to those two Super Bowls, winning one. But then you see, they got old, they still have Russell Wilson, but you see that they're rebuilding. You can go back a few years before that, you could look at, say, the Green Bay Packers. They had a great young defense, you know? You had Aaron frickin' Rodgers, they had all kinds of weapons. And for, you know, four years or so, they were really a great team if they had an opportunity. You don't necessarily see that at this moment. They're in a process of rebuilding and remaking themselves. And you almost look at it like, you know, they're, they're thinking this next run may be without Aaron Rodgers. You look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. You don't look at the Pittsburgh Steelers and say they should be challenging for a Super Bowl. You have big question marks with your quarterback. Your defense that used to be dominating isn't quite dominating like it used to. And it's time for them to kind of make a whole lot of changes. See what I mean? Um, the Rams. The Rams kind of had lightning in a bottle. New young coach, you know, Todd Gurley, great shape, running back. 
you know, Jared Goff. They found out how to use them, and teams hadn't figured out what they were going to do. You don't really look at the Rams right now and say, yeah, they're, they're ready to make a run. They are in cap hell, and they're rebuilding the roster and having to pay people like Jalen Ramsey that they traded for. So the Cowboys, I think that this is the time that maybe you decide we're going to push all the chips in. And the reason I say that is, is as good as Zeke Elliott is, when you look at the numbers on running backs, running backs have a shelf life and usually after the fourth year is when they start going downhill. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rules. You have guys like Adrian Peterson that are still playing or, um, damn, what's his name from San Francisco? Um, Father Time here. But that's few and far between. Usually, running backs don't last that long. Now, we saw what happened with Russell Wilson. He used to have beast mode, how that was a great balance between Russell Wilson and his ability to run the ball as well as pass the ball, but also having that threat of beast mode. Once beast mode got old, retired, and then came back with the Raiders, they weren't really quite that same team. They had to change what they were doing. For us, Tyron Smith, Tyron Smith, who is still one of the best tackles in football, it's gotten to the point where he's beginning to have those nagging injuries. You know, you got Zach Martin, still one of the best guards in football, but you turn around and you lose, of course, Travis Frederick. Travis Frederick, it was great having him back, but Travis Frederick, he played really well, but he was not the same Travis Frederick that he had been when he was younger. Now, you've got Lyle Collins over there, who's a young guy. you got Connor Williams, who has been injured the two years that he's been here. And you look at that and you start thinking that, yeah, we're kind of in a transition period on the offensive line. I don't know that we have, you know, the next Tyron Smith or the next Zach Martin or the next Travis Frederick there. So you realize that the time is getting shorter on that offensive line where you're going to have to rebuild it. Quarterback-wise, you're, you're good for a while. You're good for, I, I think, you're good for a while. Maybe some of you will disagree with me. But I look at this and I say, okay. Right now, you're probably at the pinnacle where this offense is going to be for the next couple of years. You look at it and you say, okay, Zeke Elliott's natural progression of, 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 of running backs. He's going to tail off over the next few years. Tyron Smith is going to tail off in the next few years. Um, your wide receivers. You don't know. Amari Cooper has had a propensity of having injuries where he's good and he's bad. So you got to figure, you know, he's going to be probably tailing off in the next few years. So you look at this and you say, my offense is probably pretty, pretty good and really is not going to get much better than where it is. I mean, you were one of the top offenses in the league. Now you look at the defense and say, they should be improved from where they were last year because we've got some bodies with experience, but you're not sure if they're going to be enough. Now, as much as we want to think about Tom Brady being an incredible quarterback, you also have to look at those defenses that always have been there with New England. We always think about Super Bowl champions and Tom with the rings, but none of those years that they were winning the Super Bowls did they not have a defense that could really hold their own. They really and truly did. And of course, they've always had great special teams. So here's where the Dallas Cowboys are right now. Cowboys currently have about $12 million in cap space. Not a tremendous amount, but right now that's not bad. That's kind of, I think we're 19th in the NFL. I think the Browns leave with about 37. We have 12. But the Cowboys can make a major step forward in money as far as the cap goes when they finally get Dak Prescott's deal done. Right now you're paying $31.2 million dollars for this year, that's a hard, hard number. They get a deal done with Dak and put, you know, basically get a, give them the signing bonus and you can prorate it. You can say your salary for this year is a million dollars and basically save eight to $10 million on the cap. So that gets you to about $20 million of space right now. And this is before one, you've signed your rookie class, but two, also where you look at it and say, some of these guys we have currently signed aren't going to be on the roster. So that'll kind of balance it out to where your rookie compensation versus what you have on the roster that's going to get cut. It'll be pretty much a wash. 
So technically, you've got $20 million. Now you've got guys that are out on the street. People will say, oh, let's go get Clowney. Don't forget Clowney. Forget Clowney because I, I, I think he's a clown. Okay, uh, I'm afraid that what he did last year and how he has a propensity to kind of disappear. He's never had a 10-sack season. This is one of those things that people think that, oh, he's, oh my God, he's a monster, he's a beast. Eh, I'll pump the brakes on that one. I'll pump the brakes on that one. I don't think he's as good as everybody thinks. I mean, he had five sacks last year. Was it five or was it four? It wasn't, it wasn't something that, that deserves the amount of money that he was looking for. But there's other guys out there like Emerson Griffin, and I probably mispronounce his name. I always do that, but, you know, it is what it is. I, I'm a freaking idiot. Just understand that. He ended up having, actually, his contract was through 2022, but he restructured his contract last year and got a clause in there basically making him an out. That if he reached six sacks and at least, like, 60% of the snaps, that he could become a free agent, which he exercised that. Um, his deal that he had had averaged $14.5 million a year, which is a lot. That's a whole lot. He ended up having eight sacks last year. I think he had five sacks a year before, and I think he had ten and a half sacks a year before that. But he's been on the streets for quite a while. Now, if you believe that he can make your defense a little bit better, we have some unknowns. Alden Smith, we got him. But hasn't played for four years. Randy Gregory, more than likely, you'll get him. Hasn't played for two years. And has never had you know, more than, I, I don't know, I'm trying to remember how many sacks he had. He had like three in like two games or something or other. But he hasn't had that much experience that you say, okay, we're good with that. Now, we shouldn't have to worry about him getting suspended for weed because... That's not what the NFL is going to do. So you look at that situation and say, if I put him in there on the line, that gives me another body, another wave that I throw. But he is 32 years old. If you can do him with a contract like you had with, say, a Robert Quinn, where it's incentive-laced and it's like a one-year deal, so you're not tying up a whole lot of money. And because he's been out on the street for a while, maybe you have an opportunity to uh, get him for less than that. I mean, you know, $14 million is what was going to be due had he stuck with that other contract. More than likely, Minnesota would have had to have gotten rid of him. Last year, he got $8 million from the Vikings. If you can get him in the $6, 7000000 million range and put him in there with Gerald McCoy and Don Terry Poe and have a, 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 a basically a geriatric um, defensive line along with young guys like Gallimore, and um, Antoine Woods and things, There's it, it may make sense. The other one you have to say is, if you believe that you're close, that an interception here or a big stop or force fumble there can make a difference, then you look at it and say, maybe I go ahead and make a move for Jamal Adams. Because Jamal Adams, who we see he's in Dallas training, he's in Dallas protesting for of course, Black Lives Matter, who wants to be in Dallas, you may look at this and say, that first round pick that it may cost me to get, and I wouldn't give up any, that's, that's still too much in my mind. But depending on it, if it ends up being just a first round pick and nobody else, then maybe I go ahead and consider it. Because if you believe that the team is going to make a run, if you believe that you're a Super Bowl team, that pick is really more like a second round pick because it's late in the draft. Then maybe you go ahead and you sign him as well. That's the way you've got to look. And I can't tell you how the Cowboys feel about the situation. But for me, I kind of say, let's push the chips all in. The Eagles in our division... You know, I know they, they've got big heads and they think that they're great and everything else, but I think the Eagles are one of those teams that their window is closing and they're getting closer to the point of needing to rebuild. That's stain, okay? It's not a cut. It's, it's stain from where I did this other rack over here. I think that they're slowly going downhill and at the point where they're going to need to start rebuilding soon. We know the Redskins and the, uh, the Giants, they're rebuilding completely. they got a long ways to go. 
And as you go through our conference, I don't know that we have the juggernaut. Everybody, of course, is going to point to Tampa Bay and say they're going to be great with, with Tom Brady, but I, I still think that's oversold. And New Orleans, New Orleans is going to be tough. New Orleans is always tough, especially if you have to play there. Green Bay, I think Green Bay came up, but I think they're going to come back down some. Um, you look at the 49ers, I think the 49ers are going to come back a little bit. I don't think the Rams are that great. I, and so you look at the conference, and I, I can't look at and say there is a juggernaut that you just can't beat. I look at this and say that there's everybody in there, that there's no truly dominant team that you got to say, no matter who we get, we can't beat them. I don't look at it and say that. I look at our team and say, we ended up being 8-8 eight and eight when we really did not click on all cylinders where we had games where Zeke Elliott disappeared. We had games where we didn't have a damn kicker. We had games where the defense just couldn't stop the running. And we never really got everything together talent-wise that if we can get the coaching staff to, to just take what we had from last year and get a little bit better play calling, a little bit better special team, a turnover here and there, your team does a whole lot better. So I say yes, but it's not my money. It's not my call, but I think that you're close enough that you go ahead and risk it. Drop me a comment on here and let me know what you think. Am I crazy? Am I a freaking idiot and don't know what I'm talking about? Or do you think maybe that's what the Cowboys should do? All right, I got to get all these things cut and sanded so I can start putting together some more laces for you guys. I'll see you.